Hey there, everybody. James here from My RV Broker. I don't know why I introduce myself at every video, but it's just a habit, I guess. Anyway, I hope you're having a good day. Hey, I wanted to do a quick video uh, and talk to you about a couple different things as it relates to negotiation with RVs. You know, there's no surprise to this uh, statement that uh, 2022 is kind of the year of the RV. 2021 was pretty exciting. Um, but man, if you're a seller, if you're in uh, the RV business and you're selling an RV, man, I got to tell you, the uh, the pricing is just outrageous. And so what do you do as a buyer? Um, you know, one of the things that I, I like to do, of course, in my RV broker business, I'm just noticing that back there, if you notice on the wall, there's some antlers. I won't tell you if they're real or not, but you know, when I move up and down like this, it looks like I've got horns, but uh Anyway, this is where I can do my video this morning, and that's what I'm going to do, doggone it. But when it comes to negotiating uh, as a buyer, what are some of the things that you should do? What are, more importantly, some of the things that you should not do? Let's start out with some of the things that you should do when you're negotiating price. Let's say that you've whittled down, as I say, to the number one floor plan that you love, that everything else compares to. In fact, I just did a podcast um, you can find this on Apple, all the different uh, Spotify, er ev everywhere you want to look, you can find the My RV Broker podcast. Um, it's also called the My RV Ninja podcast, depending upon where you look at it, because, you know, that was my way of karate chopping all the BS when it comes to uh, the buying experience. But when you um, when you go to negotiate price, you know, one of the things that um, a lot of people mistakenly do is they put the blinders on and they listen to all the chatter. And so the chatter's going on and on. They're reading in Facebook. Great place to start are these Facebook groups. In fact, I encourage, I encourage that. I'd like to have people uh, go and, and go to these Facebook groups to get a bunch of answers from owners, real owners, so that they're, it's unbiased information. Um, they're going to tell you the skinny on it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, etc. cetera. Uh, but once you get down to the buying decision and you start really putting the full court press on, you are looking hard at some of these uh, RVs or maybe particularly one RV that you love. You got to kind of pull back and you got to focus and you got to not listen. You got to not listen uh, to um, the chatter. And so, um, you know, a lot of people get caught up. Well, maybe I shouldn't buy this. Maybe I should buy, you know, every other RV might have compared to this one that you want. And, um, you know, you're listening and you're being drawn and pulled in all these different directions. And finally, you're just emotional over this whole thing. And so you decide, that's it. I'm going to do it. And so you go in and you find one and the salesperson and the dealership keeps going back and forth saying, hey, there's going to be a price increase, which there probably will. And hey, we're not going to, you know, end up having one of these for the, you know, another three months, which may or may not be true. Um, you know, you got to buy this now. You got to put the deposit down now. You got to do all those kind of things now. And so, of course, you got the blinders on, you're focused and you're worried about all this other stuff. So you say, okay, let's do it. The problem is what you should have done. And let's just use again to make it a little easier. Let's say that this is a new RV. Um, and uh, you've got several different dealers out there that represent that particular manufacturer in that model, um, and you're going after it, and you know there's one that's close by to you, and you may or may not uh, like the reputation of this dealer, but you gotta get it because you can't wait any longer, and frankly, you're just over it, over the whole research process. You're frustrated, it's not fun. You know you wanna do this, so you gotta go do it. That said, um, what ends up happening is, is that people go in there and say, this sounds like a pretty good price. You might even go to the NADA.com uh, website for the RVs and it'll tell you based on your zip code, you kind of what the average retail price is. Uh, a lot of times the average retail price is not very consistent across the nation. It's just specific to your area. And there's a reason guys why dealers pay for the NADA uh, guidelines and, um, and percentages and retail values and wholesale values. So whenever you're getting something for free, it's usually not accurate. It's not gonna be you know significantly off in many cases, but that NADA guidelines, that's a good starting point, but I would not rely on that uh, to determine whether or not I'm getting a good deal. What you really wanna do is, yeah, go, it, while you are in the research mode, you're finding out whether or not this RV is something that is riddled with problems or whether or not people love it. So you've now decided you're gonna buy this RV. Uh, and then before you decide to do that, or maybe while you're deciding to do that, you should definitely ask, hey, what, what are people paying? You know, What pricing are you seeing out there? You don't look on RV Trader or some of these other great websites, but use that as a basis to determine whether or not you're having a good idea. But back to the brand new scenario, by the way, dealers do sell new units as well and are, are advertised on all these different websites. And a lot of times they're sneaky about it. They'll come in and say, 
uh, call for price. It won't tell you mileage, you know, uh, call for price. And, and they want to get you on the phone because if they get on the phone, then they know certain buttons that they can push. Uh, but back, let's go. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of going on and on about uh, these different things about this specific problem. And that is you put the blinders on, you're going to go buy it, you're listening to all the chatter, all the negative stuff, all these voices, and you're like, I'm over it, let's do it. Well, again, easy math. Let's say this RV cost $100,000. Um, and what you should have done is you should have done uh, your research a little better and you should have reached out to at least two other dealers. And these two other dealers, you should let them know, make sure you're comparing apples to apples, find out, uh, especially if they've got these units you know, there, these RVs there, or whether or not they're going to have them. Um, I'm sorry, I just keep cracking myself up because I keep seeing these horns in the background. I don't know where to stand, people. Um, but uh, yeah, you don't. You, you should have gone to two different dealers. And uh, long story short, you did not. And so you found out that if you'd gone to two other dealers, they would do what they have always done and should be doing now. And I'm seeing a lot more of uh, is they compete for your business. And so when that happens, you get a price at 95, you get a price down at 90. You go back to the dealer that you like the best, maybe your hometown dealer. And you say, look, here's the thing. I've got this offer here. Uh, I really want to work with you. Can you at least match this price or beat it so that I can make this an easy decision for all of us and go forward? And you're just honest with them. And then hopefully they'll come back and be honest with you. And if they come back and say, look, we can't do that, but we can do this, uh, then you should just sit on it. Just wait. Just let them realize that they've got a real legitimate offer here. They're not making as much money on the front end. But you know, again, if you're financing, they're going to make money there. And so what ends up happening is, is that you just sit back and say, you know what? I really appreciate that. I'm not in a major rush. So I want to go ahead and buy this from you and let me know if anything changes. Give it 24 hours. Give it 40. Yeah, you might miss an opportunity, but opportunities come and go every day. So what you have to do again is, is be patient. Make sure you do all your due diligence, your research. And then when you're looking to buy... Um, you need to have at least three different buyers out there that you're looking at so that they can do, I mean, different sellers, because as a buyer, they need to go back in and negotiate down with you and they need to compete for your price. So don't always go with your first offer. You need to make sure that you're getting at least two or three out there. And of course, if that's something that you just don't like to do and you want someone to do it for you, uh, that's what I do every day of the week. So feel free to reach out to me at james at myrvbroker.com or james at myrvninja.com, whatever you prefer, and uh, we'll go from there. Hey, I hope you have a good day. If there's anything at all, uh, yeah, reach out. And if you're not out there RVing yet, get out there and RV.